Hello, welcome to video five uh, of our AS level videos. And we looked at demand before. Well, in this video, it's time to look at supply. And I know that students, pupils get much more confused over supply than they do demand. So that's probably because as an individual, you're likely to have had more experience demanding things, acting as a consumer in a market, rather than acting as a supplier, uh, supplier acting as a, a producer and reacting to price changes in that way. So it's, it's, it's not understandable that, that you would find it more confusing to picture yourself in the position of the supplier of a good. So let's look at supply and the S curve, the supply curve. First of all, we'll define supply. So supply is the quantity of a good that will be offered for sale in a market at a given price and in a given period of time. That is, businesses have to consider how much of a good they feel it's profitable and worthwhile producing and offering for sale given the market price. And as they consider that, as they decide how much quantity they wish to supply into a market, of course they're weighing up the cost that they're facing to produce that good. They're looking at how much land, labour and capital they're going to need and what are the prices of the land, the labour, the capital, what is the technology that's available to help them produce the good and what taxes they would have to pay perhaps uh, on the labour or anyway any other tax um, as, as a cost of production. And in that, in, in that way, by looking at these costs, they judge whether it's worthwhile or not to produce a good using land, labour and capital in a market given the price. They also, of course, have to consider alternative uses of uh, their time and land, labour and capital. So there may be alternative pr products to be made which uh, give a better return. So those things are running through the mind of the business as they decide how much they're willing to supply. Now, the higher the price in the market, the more willing the supplier is to dedicate land, labour and capital towards the production of a good. And indeed, the higher the price in the market, the more are the suppliers who are willing to step into the market and, jet and, and make the good. And that's why we get an upward sloping supply curve. The supply curve is upward sloping, indicating that at higher prices, greater quantity will be supplied. You see, in a market, Perhaps at very low prices, let's say at price P1, there aren't many suppliers willing to, to step into this market and produce this good because at that low price, there, there aren't many suppliers who think that they can afford to pay for land, labour and capital and produce the good efficiently enough to make it worthwhile. Consequently, this point on the supply curve is telling us that only a low quantity, quantity 1, will get supplied. But if the price in the market for this good is higher, let's say the price is up here at P2, well, this point on the supply curve tells us that Q2 will be supplied into the market. The higher price has encouraged existing suppliers to produce more of the good and to pay for more land, labour and capital, plus it's attracted new suppliers into the market who were not willing to produce the good when the price was only P1, but at a price of P2, they say, yes, it is worth, us, uh, it is worth me um, paying for land and labour and capital and using my entrepreneurial skills and putting it all together and, and uh, producing the good. So the higher the price, the greater the quantity. Now, a common question I get when, when, when introducing the supply curve is, well, hang on, um, if there's a higher price, why would they make more? Because um, people won't buy as many. If the price is higher, people won't buy as many. So it's, it's crazy to produce so much. But, but the mistake that students make when they say that is that they're introducing demand into the creation of the supply curve. It's not about demand. It's about supply. If the price in the market is P1, only this will be produced. If the price is P2, more will be produced. Don't have to worry at the moment whether there will be demand at P2. We haven't actually put demand and supply together yet. That comes in the next video. But if the price is at P2, well, it must be uh, that price is generated at P2. It must be that there is demand there at that price. 
that the reason price could be P2 is it must be where demand and supply meet. But I don't want to bring demand into this video. This is about supply and explaining to you why the supply curve in a market slopes upwards. At lower prices, not as many suppliers are willing to enter this market. They don't see it's worthwhile at such a low price. There aren't many suppliers who believe they can turn a profit um, and get a good return uh, having to pay for land, labour and capital. Consequently, very low supply, quantity supplied. Whereas at higher prices, greater quantity supplied because more, um, because more suppliers are willing to step into the market and produce this good. Now, I'm talking about a change in price. And when there is a change in price, there is a change in quantity supplied and we move along the supply curve. Because that supply curve is simply, it's simply a, a series of points telling us at various prices what quantity will be supplied. So if the price of a good changes, the quantity supplied changes. We move to another point on the supply curve. There's no need to, to change the the position of the entire curve. We simply go to another point. So we're talking about changes in quantity supplied when the price changes. However, it is possible to show changes in supply. You see, as I said, suppliers are considering their costs of production when they decide how much they wish to supply. Let's imagine in a market for a good, there is currently a supply curve S1 and currently the price is at P1 and the quantity is at Q1 being supplied. The reason that there is quantity Q1 is that suppliers have assessed all the costs that they would have to pay to produce the good. Some suppliers have said no, I'm not interested in supplying. Other suppliers have said yes, given these costs of production, given the price of labour, of rent, the taxes I have to pay, electricity, energy prices, raw material prices, given the costs I have to pay in the production of this good, yes, I am willing to supply it. And enough suppliers are saying at price P1 they are willing to supply this good so that across the market Q1 is supplied. If there is a change in one of the costs of production, this will force all suppliers to reassess whether they are willing to supply in this market. And that will change the position of the entire supply curve because it changes the position of how much will be supplied at every price level. For example, let's imagine we're in this position, but there is a change in labour costs. Labour costs across the country rise. Producers now are facing higher costs. They've got to pay higher labour costs. So at price P1, fewer suppliers than before are willing to supply. There will be suppliers who still supply. But there will be suppliers who previously had said, mm, yes, given the cost of production, I'm willing to supply. Who now, with the higher labour costs, say, you know, given the cost of production now, at price P1, I'm not willing to supply. So at price P1, there would now be, following a rise in a cost such as labour, a drop in supply, perhaps only Q2. Indeed, we could study that at every price level, where the quantity supplied had been before, there would be a shift inwards. So at this price level, at this price level, P2, um, it had been here, but now it might only be here. And all of the points on the old, that made up the old supply curve, have shifted inwards such that we now have a supply curve S2 which represents the willingness at all prices of suppliers to supply or not supply given the new costs of production, given that rise in labour costs. And that has repositioned every point on the supply curve, in this case inwards, indicating less supply than before at every price including P1. So that change in a cost of production causes a shift in the supply curve and we say there has been a change in supply. Not a change in quantity supplied, that's simply when price changes. We move along the supply curve. This is a change in supply. 
and in this case, a rise in the cost of production caused a decrease in supply. Had costs of production fallen, perhaps raw materials got cheaper, perhaps energy costs fell, that would cause all the points on the supply curve to shift outwards, and we get a supply curve out here, showing increased supply at every price level. But be careful. Don't get confused. When is supply increasing and when is it decreasing? If I told you that this was S1 and this was S2, what's happened? S1 has shifted to S2. You might think that that's an increase in supply. You might think that that's a decrease in supply. Which is it? Well, it's an increase in supply. Even though the curve seems to have somehow fallen, don't think like that. This is an increase in supply. And the way to appreciate that is to take a price level, let's take the price level P1, and say, well, when the S-curve was S1, how much was supply at P1? And it's this much, Q1. But after the shift, there's, there's a, now there's a much higher um, quantity being supplied. The supply curve has shifted outwards, and it's shifted outwards enormously. I made this one a bit odd because I deliberately drew the supply curves as quite shallow gradients for, for effect. But as you can see, at price P1, initially, the quantity supplied was very, was very low. Something has changed. Some, some cost of production must have fallen enormously to shift the supply curve outwards so far that now, at price P1, a much larger quantity is being supplied. So it's a very, very common mistake, as you get used to demand supply curves, to misread whether there has been an increase or decrease in supply. You have to take great care over that one, because you can really make a mess up of a question uh, if you get that the wrong way around. OK? So there we are. That's the supply and the supply curve. Hope that was uh, helpful. See you in the next video.